This video is sponsored by Native. More on them later. This might look like something from a science fiction movie, but it's actually just the culmination of the Flying Ship Company's cargo delivery concept paired with Kevin from the YouTube channel Think Flight and his epic scratch building skills. Also, the RDU Pilot based ground effect code that Sebastian and I have been working on. Put all three together, and this is what you get. I was super happy with how this thing turned out. It's undoubtedly my favorite RC aircraft I've ever flown. It's just so big and graceful, and its flight characteristics are much more docile than other RC aircrafts I've flown. The wingspan is 6 feet and the all-up weight is 15.5 pounds. It stays in the ground effect fairly well in manual mode, but definitely requires some precision throttle control. Descending down into ground effect from normal flight can be a bit tricky because the plane has a tendency to nose down as you approach the ground. This is because these reverse delta wing aircraft tend to have a larger center of pressure shift as they enter the ground effect, compared to some other wing shapes. Once in the ground effect, the LiDAR altitude control feature definitely made my job easier as the pilot. Once I would flip the switch to enable the LiDAR, it kind of became more like driving an RC car on cruise control. I could forget about the throttle and elevator and just steer it around the lake. One of the cool features this model has is swiveling motors. The idea here is that you can blast a bunch of air down under the wing to help get the vehicle up on step. This is probably not as useful for small scale models like this one, but it definitely did seem to help when we were testing it out in choppy water. At one point it almost took off with nearly zero ground speed. One of my favorite parts about our tests on smoother water was how you could actually see the wake from the downwash. Pretty cool. This thing flies amazingly. It's just like, it's butter. It's just smooth as butter. The airframe is pretty cool and all, but uh, I think I really put the icing on the cake by gluing the flight controller in there. That was hard work. I really put the team on my back, got us across the finish line. <laughs> Good work, Daniel. This project all started a few months ago when Flying Ship Company saw my foam boardy chronoplan video and reached out to see if I wanted to build them a model of their autonomous cargo delivery ground effect vehicle. My response was, sure, but I know a guy who can do it a lot better and that's when Kevin got involved. 
Previous to this project, he had built another ground effect vehicle that Sebastian and I had been using for software development. That one turned out great, and it had really good flight characteristics, so Kevin was just the guy for the job. Kevin has already made his own video about the project, which can be found on his YouTube channel called Think Flight. Ironically, Kevin didn't go into too much detail on the whole build process in his video, but he did give me all the footage, and I think it's super interesting, so let's dive in. But first, a quick word about the sponsor of this video, Native Body Care Products. Building planes out of composite materials exposes me to enough nasty stuff, so the last thing I need is bad things in my body care products. That's why I got Native's Aluminum-Free and Paraben-Free Deodorant. I love Native deodorants because they dry quickly and don't feel sticky afterwards. They do a great job of maintaining their effectiveness all day, even after vigorous exercise. And they keep you smelling oh so fresh. They offer all sorts of great scents including coconut and vanilla, eucalyptus and mint, and cherry and vanilla macaron. They also offer limited edition festive holiday scents including sugar cookie, candy cane, and fresh mistletoe. Three deodorants are normally $36, but if you use my link and code TESTFLIGHT, you'll get them for $24. That's 33% off. With my code, you can also get 20% off any body wash or toothpaste. Now back to the video. He started out the design in XFLR5. This is a computer program that analyzes different wing shapes and airfoils so you can optimize flight performance. All the wing and tail sections were hot wire cut out of EPP foam, and end caps were cut out of plywood to make the wing sections stronger and more durable. To join the wing sections together, these big rectangular carbon fiber bars were made with a custom aluminum mold, and these slide into wrapped Kevlar sleeves that are embedded in the wings. They're held in place with Gorilla Glue, which works really well for this kind of foam because it expands into all the little pores and cracks. These little tabs are used to keep the wings from sliding off. There's a captive nut on the underside and a screw that goes in the top. The aileron servo connectors are embedded into the sides of the wings, so they are automatically plugged in when you attach the wings. Servo compartments were also created at this stage. After all that cutting and gluing, the surface of the foam is pretty rough, and there's a lot of cracks and holes and whatnot. To smooth all that out, a mixture of spackle, goop, and toluene is applied, and then sanded flat once it dries. The goop and toluene is to make the spackle flexible and more durable. All the trailing edges are solid balsa wood. They are glued into the foam and then shaved down and sanded. As you can imagine, this is quite a time-consuming process. It really makes you appreciate the level of craftsmanship here. Next up comes covering the wings with Kevlar. Instead of epoxy, Kevin uses a mix of goop and toluene so that it's more durable and can't crack. For the center section of the wing, a thin layer of fiberglass was also applied. Here's what the wing looks like after covering. Next up came the fuselage. A large block of foam was glued into the wing and painstakingly shaved down to its final shape. Then came some float tests in the pool to make sure it was sitting in the water at a reasonable angle. Once the hull and fuselage were shaped correctly, they got covered in Kevlar just like the wing. Here's a shot of the winglet and the pontoon getting covered in Kevlar, and then they got glued onto the wingtips. Next it was time for the vertical stabilizers. These were also hot wire cut out of EPP and covered the same way as everything else was. Here you can see how the inside of the fuselage was shaved out to make room for all the electronics and battery. Here's the motor swivel shaft and that was attached to the fuselage, and then the nose got some more Kevlar. Here's the start of the horizontal stabilizer, which is big enough alone to be the main wing for a normal sized RC plane. Pretty crazy. It was made the same way as everything else. Here's putting a carbon spar in. The elevator surfaces are solid balsa, and they're all shaved down and then sanded to shape. So this is what you get when you do your own custom trailing edges. Once that was all covered in Kevlar, the control surfaces were sliced into the balsa with a razor blade, and then the bevel angle is painstakingly carved in as well. This aircraft has elevons on the tail instead of just an elevator like most planes. This is to give it a little extra roll control, and the redundancy is an added bonus. There it is, just sitting in the pool. After that came paint, and then the motor mount mechanisms were assembled. I cut some carbon plate parts on the CNC router for Kevin to use for the actual motor mounts themselves. And after that, I showed up to distract Kevin while he tried to do all the finishing touches. Hey man, knock it off. I'm trying to do some float testing here. Ah, oh, come on, I'm trying to swim. Just kidding, I showed up to install the TF-02 LiDAR module and get the autopilot set up. Here's the LiDAR sensor that we installed yesterday. Basically just in the base of the wing there, and it uh, measures the distance from the aircraft to the water. So that's just changing the throttle proportionally to the distance sensor reading. That's pretty cool. Sick. 
After a few days of tuning the flight controller, we packed up and headed to the Point Wainimi Naval Base for the Coastal Trident Tech Expo, which was pretty cool. There were lots of drones and autonomous boats and other cool things on display there. And we even flew the GEV over the harbor out there, which was pretty neat, but we didn't film any of that because it was apparently very secretive. Aw, oh, seal! Anyways, that's all for this video. If you want to see more of Kevin's builds, go check out his YouTube channel called Think Flight. And if you want to learn more about the flying ship company, you can check them out as well. Here's a bunch more footage I'm just going to let play out because it's too cool to get rid of. But apart from that, thanks for watching, bye. It definitely reminds me of a, a manta ray. Yeah. Or a stingray, I forget which is which. Excuse me, sir. Is that a drone? No. It's an ocean spaceship. Kevin, come check this out. This is the LiDAR data from one of the ground effect passes. I'm really, uh, really happy with this data because when I'm flying, like in Seattle, on rougher water usually, the data is all over the place and you get, you get the rangefinder reading zero sometimes. Like, that's basically just false data. And here, we're not reading anything but, like, accurate data. How much variation is that? Um, so it's going between, like, 0.4 and 0.7 meters peak to peak so that's pretty tight yeah it seems like it's holding altitude really well i don't know if that's because the water was just absolutely glass or if this tf02 lidar is just a lot better than the one i'm using but pretty sweet